So part of your job must, in a sense, be as a therapist, that you're handling grieving family members or non-family members, people who have agendas, maybe people jostling over the will or having that in mind. Some occasionally may even be happy, but more often than not, they're tragically bereaved. And all of these individuals you talk with, you have to manage, you get them to cooperate. So in a sense, you're a psychologist of sorts. Well, uh, my oldest childhood friend actually has uh, two degrees, one in journalism and one in counseling. And she says the elicitation of information, that process is identical. Where they diverge, of course, is what you do with the information once you have it. And indeed, we need to be very careful. We're calling families at vulnerable times. They're grieving. They're exhausted. They're sleep deprived. They have a million things to do. And we need to be very careful that we not, however unwittingly, present ourselves as their friend, their advocate, their grief counselors. Now that said, it behooves us both journalistically so they feel comfortable enough to talk to us and be candid, and in purely human terms, to treat them as well as possible within allowable professional limits. Doing all this, what do you think you have learned about the psychology of death that, say, maybe I wouldn't know? I don't think there's anything I've learned that any of us wouldn't know. Um, what I've learned is death sucks, but I think I pretty much knew that before, and I think you pretty much know that, too. But worse than, than maybe you thought 15 years ago, before you were doing this? Actually, no. The reverse, if anything. I'm very often asked, oh, you write obits, you're around death every day, isn't that depressing? And I must admit, when I started the job full-time in 2004, I worried about that a little bit going in, and to my great joy and great relief, I found out right away it's almost never depressing for all of these reasons we've discussed. In an obit of perhaps a thousand words where you're writing about someone fascinating who did something really interesting, often really wonderful, maybe a sentence or two will be about the death, and the other 98% of the story is about the life. So in a strange way, with a rare exceptions, writing obits is a kind of very life-affirming thing to do, and also wonderful because my colleagues and I are paid to tell stories, and it doesn't get much better than that. So it's often said, for instance, that the greatest works in the theater are tragedies. Hamlet, one at King Lear, two examples of many. Uh, and maybe we're attracted to tragedy because, in a sense, it's life-affirming or it's somehow cathartic. And writing about the deaths of individuals, you feel it gives you a better or maybe healthier perspective on life in the same way that going to see a tragic work in the theater might. But again, think of what was just said. It's not tragedy. Uh, that's, that's my point. Writing about, it's not the case that writing about obits is life-affirming because it's tragedy. Writing about obits is life-affirming because it's not tragedy. 